Hey, so for our last M&M theory of this semester, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I've got my helper, Irene, here with me today, and we set up a winter wonderland scene here with our gingerbreads. It is holiday season here, and we got some friends here to help us uh, illustrate what we wanna talk about today, and that's how we're using new technologies like drones to help us in measuring and monitoring plant communities. And uh, what we're gonna do here is take a bunch of photos of this scene with uh, a cell phone here and I'm going to sort of illustrate how we use those two-dimensional photos to actually create a three-dimensional reconstruction of this scene and then how we can take measurements off of this. It's the same technique, the same uh, process that we would use if we flew a drone over a uh, monitoring plot out on the, on the range, right? Um, so it'll just illustrate some of the pluses and, and minuses, the pros and cons of what we can do with photograph-based monitoring. So I've got these little targets around the, the edge here, and these are uh, uh, coded targets, so the software will recognize them automatically. They'll help in, in stitching the scene together. And then I also know the exact dimensions or distances between all of these. So uh, we can use that to scale the model so our measurements are, are actually precise. So they, they reflect what the actual dimensions of these little gingerbread houses and people are here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and set up here and uh, take the photos of this scene and then we will uh, come back and do the reconstruction. Okay, we've got all of our photos that we took and I've brought them into this program called Agisoft Metashape to just show how we're gonna process these two-dimensional photos into uh, three-dimensional models and, uh, and, and stitch them together into an ortho mosaic for our Candyland scene. Now, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here on how I, I do this. Um, if you wanna learn more about this, then you should take my drone remote sensing class. How's that for a shameless self-promotion? Um, so before we start though, let's take a look at one of these photos. This is the last one that I took just from looking straight down uh, on, the, on the scene from standing on the chair. And I wanna point out like something important here and this speaks to sort of why we can use two-dimensional photos to create three-dimensional models. And notice here, so this gingerbread house is sort of the center of the of the scene and you can see that we have more or less a straight up and down view of that house but look at these other guys out here to the side right they're vertical as well right but but we can see the side of them where we can't really see the side of this house and on the house on the upper left corner we can see the right hand side of it and the houses on the right hand side we can see the left portion of those houses so what's going on here is that our camera in the in the cell phone and this is the same for any other like regular camera like a dslr camera or a point and shoot camera okay the lens on that camera has a single focal point which is right in the center of the photo so it's going to be somewhere like right in here okay and as you move away from the center of that photo, you get this distortion effect where things that are taller than the, what's in the center of the photo appear to be leaning away from the center of the image. And if we had things that were lower, right, um, things that were like lower than the elevation of the table, they would actually look like they were leaning toward the center of the photo. And this is a um, phenomenon that we call relief displacement or terrain displacement. And this is really why we can do this sort of stereo image analysis, why we can create a three-dimensional model from two-dimensional photos. So even if I had my camera at exactly the same angle and I moved it to one side or the other, that would change this terrain displacement. And the uh, say if we slid it all the way over to the left-hand side, then I'd get a straight up and down view of like this gingerbread house. Uh, on the left, but then I'd have a side perspective view of this gingerbread house. And so by having a whole bunch of photos 
of this scene from lots of different angles, okay, then we're able to leverage that terrain displacement and actually figure out like where the camera is and where it's located and how it was oriented and the distance from the camera to each little spot on this scene. So that's sort of the theory behind what's going to happen here. And so the first step that we need to do is called aligning these photos. Um, and it's just an option called align photos. And this is sort of the, the secret sauce step of uh, Agisoft Metashape. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. It's gonna take a little bit of time to, uh, to do it. And what's gonna happen is it, uh, Metashape's gonna figure out where in relative space each of these um, photos was taken from, where the camera was and how it was oriented. And then it's going to uh, find uh, key points or uh, tie points that are spots in one image that it can find in another image and then use those to uh, assemble these images and it'll give us what's called a sparse point cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that offline and then we'll come back and, uh, and see uh, what we can do with the results from these steps. Okay, so the alignment's done and I went ahead and did a couple of other steps which included uh, uh, auto identifying those markers or targets that we put on the on the tabletop and then inputting the, uh, the distances between those creating sort of a local coordinate system so that we could scale everything. So this is our first product that we get out of Metashape which we call a sparse point cloud. And these are just the locations of the tie points that it used to sort of figure out where these images are in relationship to each other. And if I, if I grab this and tilt it a little bit, you can actually start to see the outline shapes of the, uh, of the houses, right? And the gingerbread houses and the, and the people and other things that are, that are there, okay? Um, if I zoom out a little bit, the other thing that we get at this point is uh, Metashape's estimate of where the camera was every time it took a picture. So the location and orientation of the camera um, and it actually puts the, the sort of photos on here uh, in relative space, which is actually kind of kind of cool, right? Because that, that actually shows the, uh, the, the, the sort of overlap and the placement of all of the photos, okay? So here is the, the photo that I took sort of standing on the chair directly over the top of the, of the image, okay? Um, I can also put on here, so these are the different targets that we had, and that, again, just allows us to establish this local coordinate space. Uh, so that everything can can be scaled correctly. So I'm going to turn these off so they don't clutter the, the view here. The next step then is to, to take the 3D model that's defined by these sparse points and then create a dense point cloud. I've gone ahead and done that. And, uh, and that's basically just the same idea. It's a 3D point cloud, except it's just much, much denser. In fact, we've got over 5 million points in this, uh, in this dense point cloud. And as I sort of grab and rotate that, then you can really start to see the three-dimensional structure um, of this scene. Now, it's not filling in the sides of some of these buildings very well, and that's just because, like, I only had what, you know, I think it's 12 photos here of this. I didn't take a, a lot uh, really from the, from the sides, kind of really capturing the sides of the buildings really well. Uh, we could fill that in just by, by taking some more pictures from different, from different angles, but this will work for our purposes today. So let's wrap this back around to how we might use something like this in, in natural resource monitoring, right? So we have a, a three-dimensional model now, a three-dimensional representation of a surface. Um, look at a, maybe an example of uh, doing this in uh, shrub communities. We can then estimate the height of uh, the shrubs, or we could look at the sort of structural complexity or structural diversity, um, very similar to how we might do it in, uh, in, a, in a field technique. We could pull a, uh, a virtual transect across this and take measurements. But the other thing that this really buys us that's hard to do in the field is we have a complete three-dimensional representation of this system. So now I can start to look at things like what's the variation in heights rather than just what is the mean height, right? Because I can generate, in this case, five million uh, measurements or observations of height across this area. So you can see that this really gives us a very rich, very dense uh, view of, 
uh, of, of what's happening on the ground relative to its vegetation structure or its, its sort of uh, structural complexity. Okay, um, so there's a couple of other things that we can do here as well. Um, from the dense point cloud, we can create a digital elevation model. Um, I'm just going to use default uh, para parameters here, and uh, it, it's going to take a second to run. I might pause and come back, and then we'll look at the digital elevation model here. All right, our DEM is done. Let's take a look at that. So here's a digital elevation model representation. Okay, so this is basically showing us the, the sort of surface of the table here, and then each uh, it's taken the sort of dense point cloud and then reduced it to, to pixels. Let's put a square grid over top of it and then uh, calculated the average or uh, value or the maximum value uh, of the elevation within each, each one. Okay, and so this is a useful product. Same thing, we can calculate heights, we can calculate volumes from this. Okay, but this is also uh, a necessary step for us to do the next product, which is called an ortho mosaic. And an ortho mosaic is just a stitched together version of all of these photos. Except, remember, we talked about terrain displacement a little bit ago. With terrain displacement, you can't just smash these photos together, right? Because each one was taken from a different place. And in our case, they were all taken from different angles as well. And so we have to correct for the terrain displacement first. The digital elevation model lets us do that, and uh, we can then use that and our original photos to assemble an ortho mosaic. This is going to take a minute, so I'm going to pause here, and then I'll come back when it's done, and we can look at the ortho mosaic and what's sort of special about that. Okay, our ortho mosaic is done. Let's take a look at that. All right, cool. So you're going to say, wow, this looks a lot like that photo that you had when you stood on the chair and took it looking down at the at the table. And yes, it does, except there's one really important difference here. Um, let's look at that original photo. Okay, um, let me zoom in here. Uh, pan down a little bit, there we go. Remember we had this terrain displacement going on where we could see the sides of these buildings, right? And from a, from a monitoring or measurement standpoint, if you wanted to try to estimate, say, cover, of these buildings, right? You would uh, overestimate your cover because some of the, your cover estimates are actually coming from the sides of the buildings and not just from the top, okay? So this terrain displacement is actually a big deal if you're gonna be analyzing, say, individual photos. But now, look at this compared to the ortho. The ortho mosaic corrects for the terrain displacement and so we don't have, we like we're just seeing the tops. We're getting a planimetric view of all of our little friends and all of our gingerbread buildings. Okay, so that's the power of the ortho mosaic is two, twofold, right? One is that it, it combines all these images together in a way that, that is uh, geometrically correct, right? So we can take measurements from these images. And two is it corrects for that terrain displacement. So we get that top down view of of all of the things that we um, that we have in our in our scene, okay. So what will we do with this? Well, you know, we could do a, a digital like point intercept technique to estimate cover. We could define the area and look at say um, you know area or volume, right? There's any number of our indicators that we've looked at in class that we can derive from a uh, uh, from either an ortho mosaic or from the the three dimensional model, okay. So quick tour of, of what we can do. This is, again, a really powerful technique. Um, and uh, I do sort of teach that drone remote sensing class where we take a deep dive into this, the theory behind why it works, and then how to actually do these products with Agisoft Metashape. Okay, so that's it for the last of our m, &M theory examples. I hope you can see how this emerging technology of drones is really useful for taking measurements. You know, this is still a uh, developing technology. We're still figuring out the best applications for it and all the situations where it really shines and the situations where 
uh, maybe it doesn't do so well. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more out of this technology in the future, and uh, it's going to end up, I think, really taking our ability to measure and monitor plant communities to the next level. So this is the last of our m and theory uh, uh, videos, and uh, I, I hope that you found these useful and uh, would appreciate any, any feedback that you have. So thanks. Ready, three, two, one. Look at the camera. <laughs> what in the world was that? <laughs> and I'd appreciate any feedback that you that you have. Thanks.